If you are going to Bangkok for the first time, you probably have no idea where to stay and which neighborhood is right for you. Right off the bat, let me tell you there are four neighborhoods that you need to know, especially if your budget is between $100 to $200 per night. Pra Nakhon, the most central location for travelers. It combines the old city and the riverfront. Silong, a business district with high-rise buildings, modern hotels. Siam, a bustling shopping center with lots of shopping and entertainment options. Skumwood, while it doesn't have as many tourist attractions as the other areas, this is a commercial hub of Bangkok with plenty of options for nice hotels. So that was a quick introduction to these neighborhoods. But I know you need more information to decide where to look for a hotel for your next trip. To help you with that, let's visualize what your day would look like if you stayed in one of these areas. But before I do that, if you are still watching this and find this video helpful, please click the subscribe button in the bottom right corner of this video. I love sharing my travel experiences on YouTube. And getting your support for that means I can help more people plan their trip and we can build a nice travel community together. Now that you've subscribed, let's get into it. First and foremost, let me start with Pranakon. I stay in this neighborhood for the first few days in Bangkok and I can tell you with confidence that this is the perfect area for people who want to do the full program of sightseeing within a very short amount of time. All the must-see attractions in Bangkok are concentrated in this area. The Grand Palace is just within a walking distance. So are many gorgeous temples, including the Wat Pho, where you can see a giant reclining Buddha. Also, you are very close to the Chao Phraya River, where you can cruise around on one of these boats, or even better, you can stay in a riverfront hotel. So I stayed in a place called Arun Riverside Hotel, which was located on the riverfront. Although the hotel was a bit pricey for what it is, the hotel had the most incredible view and having this view of Wat Arun and Chao Phraya River day and night was definitely one of the highlights of our trip. Now let me show you how my day went so you can visualize staying here for yourself. I started my day with a complimentary breakfast on the first floor. Casually walked over to a temple Wat Pho and came back to the hotel for a little AC break. I had a mango smoothie that I got right across the hotel and then I went for another sight singing to the Grand Palace in the afternoon. I walked back to the hotel and went out to another riverfront rooftop restaurant for dinner. To sum it up, I was able to do a lot in one day without feeling tired and rushed because I was able to walk around everywhere pretty easily. With all that said, there is a major downside of staying in this neighborhood, which is there aren't many big brand five-star hotels in this neighborhood, nor high-rise buildings. It probably has something to do with the fact that this is an old town, a home to historical sites and temples and such. Anyways, so what you will find in this neighborhood will be mostly two or three-star boutique hotels or bed and breakfast. So one thing interesting, they don't have an elevator for people, but they have an elevator for luggage which means most of the time they don't have a pool, let alone a rooftop pool. So if your ideal vacation in Bangkok looks like lounging around in a rooftop pool, doing a workout with a nice city view at a hotel gym, and have a nice breakfast in the hotel restaurant, you probably shouldn't look for a hotel in this neighborhood, but in Ceylon. Silom is a business district, meaning you will find the trendiest hotel that appeal to young professionals such as W Hotel, The Standard. And I chose to stay in the newly opened The Standard and here's how my day went here. I woke up to this view of amazing high-rise buildings, put on a stylish robe 
and took a morning dip at this rooftop pool with an amazing city view while getting drinks from the rooftop bar. After that, we went to one of the many massage parlors in the neighborhood and then had lunch at a trendy and modern restaurant on the same street. At night, we grabbed a cab for a quick 10 minute ride to get to a riverfront night market. And another nice bonus for staying in the Standard Hotel particularly is that you get a free ticket to the newest attraction of Bangkok, the Meha Nakhon Skywalk, which is right on top of the hotel. In short, if you stay in this neighborhood, you'll be able to enjoy the trendiest part of Bangkok while not being too far away from the most major attractions. And of course, there's a downside of staying in this area. Everything was a bit pricey here compared to other neighborhoods of Bangkok. So if you're more into staying in a more low-key and authentic neighborhoods that still offers this bustling metropolis vibe, you will probably like the Siam area. Siam is a bustling shopping center, a home to some of the mega shopping malls in Bangkok. These malls, such as MBK Center, are where locals go to shop, be entertained, and hang out on the weekends. So it's not just a tourist trap, and you should definitely pay a visit. And the best thing about these malls are the food courts. You can go around food courts and nibble on the most quintessential Thai snacks all day long, and still just be scratching the surface of the variety of the foods that Thailand has to offer. Needless to say, getting around in this neighborhood is so easy with BTS trains. Also, there are few attractions within the neighborhood that you can check out. The Jim Thompson's House Museum and the Bangkok Art and Culture Center are in the neighborhood as well. Here, you can find a nice four-star hotel for just under $100. Last but not least, there is Scumwit. Like I said, there aren't major attractions for travelers within the neighborhood. However, it's so well connected to the central area. And the neighborhood itself is very modern and it's very convenient, full of nice hotels and shops and pretty much everything you need will be in this neighborhood. And just because it is slightly outside of the central um, sightseeing area, the hotels tend to cost a bit less. So there you have it. I hope this was helpful and if it was, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments which neighborhood would you like to stay most in your upcoming trip. I truly appreciate your comments and I thank you for coming back to watch my travel videos every time I upload a new one. I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.